It's not so much the quota, uh, it's positive action to make sure that underrepresented uh, groups are able to get jobs. And that should be the compulsory bid. I mean, the problem really is that um, employers tend to hire people who are like them. So there's a lot of un unconscious bias going on. David Cameron had a kitchen cabinet of old Etonians because he was one. And Boris Johnson uh, had a cabinet of 65% uh, who'd gone to private school. Again, because that's where he came from. So really it's a matter of combating this. At the end of the day, you probably can't reach a quota as such. What you can do is to ensure that uh, people from underrepresented groups have every chance, chance that they should have to get a job. Yeah, but how would that apply? I mean, if, if we put that on to you, Nigel, uh, and you're our senior political commentator. And if we said, yeah, you're the best person for the job, we know you're brilliant, we've known you for years, but we're going to give it to um, a, a white uh, 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 Asian lady, because she's not as good as you, but we want to up the quota. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, there, there are always the problems there. And obviously that would be, that would be positive discrimination, which is illegal. Uh, so what you can't do is exclude, for instance, uh, someone like me just because uh, I'm a middle-aged white man. Uh, the RAF paid out five thousand pounds to thirty-one uh, 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 white men because uh, they excluded them from uh, being trainee pilots. What you're talking about here is, for instance, the tie-break rule. So that means if there are two equal candidates for the job, say I was going going for a, a, a for a job with the Asian lady you were talking about, our qualifications are absolutely identical, then the job should go to her rather than to me. And why is that? Well, on the, ba on the basis that the only, the only way that you can, uh, it's going back to the uncon uh, unconscious bias thing, the only way that you can get inclusion and diversity is to use this kind of positive action. So if you don't do that, then if I'm being, uh, if I am actually going up uh, to a boss who is also a middle-aged white man, he might be more inclined to actually choose me because I'm most like him. Right, Tom, what do you make of it all? Well, I think Nigel's quite right to say that there's, a, in terms of the current law that we have, you can't positively discriminate. You can practice what under the Equality Act is called positive. Action, but I think what we've seen in the RAF scandal and so on is that often this is a distinction in you know search of a difference. Really, a lot of places end up in practice straying over into the other category because what you're inviting people to do is to judge candidates, even if it's in a tie-break situation, on the basis of their immutable characteristics. And I think whilst that might also uh, lead to people like Nigel in this hypothetical situation <laughs> against this other Asian journalist losing out. I think it's also really bad for ethnic minorities. It treats them as sort of permanent children who constantly need that extra leg up. It also presumes that employers and the rest of us are, have these unconscious biases, that we're racist even if we don't realise it, which I think is a really ugly idea to spread throughout the workplace. And, of course, no one sensible, in my view, is, is against diversity in the workplace. Where we're talking about diversity quotas, though, I think it introduces a kind of racial, gender, bean counting, which can only divide up workers, introduce a kind of unpleasant aspect to how we recruit things. And I'm just not convinced it actually helps the groups that it um, claims to want to help in the long term. Um, can I just say, I mean, with, and I'll put this to both of you, really, the one thing that struck me about the picture from the, the Straker restaurant is saying, well, they're all white men, right? But with the different ages... For all we know, they could be different social statuses, they could be different sexualities. We, we've, we've no idea. Mm -hmm. we've, we've no idea what the diversity actually is amongst these people. We're only seeing what's on the surface. I mean, that's a fair point, Nigel, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I mean basically, uh, if you take a positive action and you end up with a line like that, I'm sure uh, Tom Straker wishes he'd never posted it, um, you could, it, it could well be that you find it and you do get um, a group of just white men. But taking one of your hypothetical examples, supposing Ellie decides that she wants to work on a building site or in engineering, 
Britain, these tend to be male stereotypical jobs. And what an employer should be doing is trying is trying to alter that kind of image. So, for instance, positive action would include, uh, say, in engineering, women uh, 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 job fairs for women organised by women. That would be perfectly legal, and that would encourage be, uh, encourage more women into those kind of jobs. But Nigel, there are just some industries. So me on a building site, for instance, I mean, you couldn't pay me to work on a building site. I think there's many, not many with women. those nails. Well, no, not with these nails. Um, but it's just something that wouldn't appeal to me. It wouldn't appeal to my friends. I mean, if there's a push for diversity on a, on a building site, for instance, you would really struggle to meet that 50 percent threshold for women. And it would be the same in something like the beauty industry. Of course, there'd be some men, just like there'd be some women on a building site. But you would really struggle to fill that 50 percent quota. So in some industries, and you could argue, even in hospitality in terms of, uh, of being a chef, it is a male-dominated industry. And that is generally because the other sex doesn't actually want to be in that environment. It doesn't appeal. Yeah, I mean, that's fine, Ellie. That, that, um, on the basis that you'd rather present a breakfast show than, than build a house, that's absolutely fine. But for women who actually would like to do, do a, a, a construction job, they should be given the chance to actually do it. So if you had a positive action, the, the European Convention on Human Rights, for instance, has a very good code for this. If you adopted that code as a compulsory thing, it would mean that, that people, women who, who actually did want to do those jobs wouldn't feel excluded from them. Yeah. Also, we're, we're presuming that they are excluded at the moment from these workplaces. I think where it's clear that discrimination takes place, that should obviously be done away with, any barriers should be got rid of. But when you get into positive action, which, as I say, is often just positive discrimination under another name, you get all kinds of problems. I think we can only look to the US to see how murky this can get. Obviously, they've had the whole Supreme Court ruling recently. And what happened with affirmative action in universities was not that your white, middle-class, heterosexual males were losing out. The primary people who were losing out as a consequence of that system were Asian Americans because they tended to do very well at school, they tended to outperform various different groups, and so they were forcibly discriminated against at various different schools. So when we talk about positive discrimination, when we talk about um, quotas and so on, we kind of always assume that the people who are going to lose out are the, are the kind of white heterosexual males. It's not necessarily the case. When you take merit entirely out of the equation, you can often end up in all kinds of horrendous situations, which is why I think it's better that we just focus on merit and focus on removing barriers where they exist rather than trying to create leg ups where I don't think they're necessary. And look, we are out of time. I'm going to get yelled at. So briefly, Nigel, if you would, you talk about unconscious bias. Doesn't that work both ways? Because people are looking at that picture and saying, in effect, it's sexist and racist. But they wouldn't say that if it was a picture of a team at your favourite um, Indian restaurant where you've got, you've got a group of Asian men stood there in their, in their aprons. No one would, would have a go at that saying you haven't got a diverse workforce. No, you're right, Stephen. I mean, the, 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 it's a pretty tricky, uh, tricky line to actually walk. Um, however, uh, merit obviously is, is, is the main point. Uh, people should be employed on merit. It's only when you have people of equal merit that the job should go to somebody from an underrepresented group.